And then the fourth thing that's often forgotten about is everyone thinks about, all right, I've got all these tags, I'm moving them through, I'm shipping, I'm receiving, I'm tracking, I'm doing whatever it is I'm doing with RFID. How did I encode those tags in the first place? If I already have a way of printing unique barcode labels, fantastic. I can use that, that sort of method to change my non-RFID barcode labels to RFID barcodes. If I can know what my numbers are ahead of time, fantastic. I can just buy the tags pre-encoded from the manufacturer. It'll probably only cost me a penny or two more per tag. But you know what? It's probably cheaper than doing development, supporting it, all kinds of other things. But if I don't have a printing or encoding method already where I can say this item is number 15.6, then chances are I may need something to do that number management for me, and thus I may be RFID nowhere. So, as we start to look at the software, we've now got all the functional details. Let's take a look at the types of software that are going to be out there. There's two key types, and you'll notice that they somewhat map to our, our origins. But there's framework models, where what happens is I've got an API, and I can build on that API whatever applications I want. And the second model is what we call the pre-canned application model. I have something for IT asset tracking. I have something for kit tracking. You drop this in, do some minimal amount of customization and integration, and you're good to go. So most people, they gravitate towards the pre-canned application if they've only got one application that they're considering RFID for. Now, if you have a long-term strategy, you're doing 10 or 15 different applications, you know what? You're probably going to want to go framework because your platform is more important to you than this particular application. So let's get into then how we evaluate once we've decided, all right, I'm looking for a pre-canned solution or framework solution, how am I going to select it? We use what we call the seven elements of middleware selection. And these seven elements have proven to be uh, incredibly valuable in just the, the RFP process, the evaluation process. And they're pretty basic. They start with things like, what platform and OS am I using? Am I using Oracle? Am I using Windows? Am I using dot, or, Am I using Java? What kinds of availability do I need? Do I care if my system is down for 24 hours? Because it's something where I boot it up, I use my RFID system, I shut it down. Or is this a mission critical application? Also, is it going to be distributed in 40, 50, 80 locations? Or is it going to be just in my manufacturing facility where I have a nice data center, I have low network latency, those kinds of things. What do I need to integrate with? And what's the methods of integration? Am I using MQ series? Am I using database, web services? Again, the user interface. If I've selected my readers and printers and other devices, does the middleware support those? Or am I going to have to go through some sort of custom development of them? Again, with the workflow, what's already out of the box that I can take and use? And then finally is pricing. So, as I look at the price, the actual raw price, even though it will scare you at first, most likely, isn't as important as what the business model is around it. So are they going to gouge you for additional readers, additional sites, additional CPUs, additional users, some combination of the above? And knowing that, as you start to plan how you're going to scale out, is going to be very important, because you want it to scale in a way, from a pricing perspective, that goes accurately with your overall so what we then do is we tend to typically break down these different dimensions and say, hey, based on I want to go framework or pre can what, uh, what am I going to choose? So in this case, am I going to look at more expensive players or cheaper players? So if I want a pre can cheap solution for Walmart clients, there's EPC solutions out there. I pay you know, $1,500 and I've got something that I can run with today. If I want a, a great API to work with and uh, deal with the costs involved with uh, custom applications, I'm going to go with uh, an IBM. Same thing with OS or programming framework. And I can go through all seven of the, the framework uh, or the, the selection criteria and do the same sort of evaluation. So if I look at my operating system or my programming platform, 
If I want to look at Windows platforms, I may say, hey, you know what, Shipcom's got a product out there that allows me to easily build and easily configure new applications. Um, but I'm a Java shop, so if I want something that's pre-canned where I can take scenarios, that's something that I can use Oath Systems. If I want more of an API, I go to someone like an IBM. And this is not meant at all to be an exhaustive list of methods. What this is really meant to do is show you a way to think about how to evaluate your, your software vendors. So as you get into the contracting process, you use the seven elements to create an RFP and really drive what middleware you're going to be selecting. We like to follow five very strict rules to contracting middleware. First is making sure that your scope is extremely tight. So make sure you've done a process flow design. You know exactly what your process is going to be. Know what those exceptions are. Do user interface design. Know what your screens are going to look like. Because you know what? They're going to change if you don't tell them ahead of time. And you can be guaranteed your cost is going to go up. You want to have guidelines in place, though. Because even though you've got screens, you want to say, all right, well, it would be logical for this particular screen to have an exception. What is the guideline? Do I have buttons in the upper right hand? Do I have a web-based framework? Do I have pop-up? Make sure that your vendor knows what you're expecting in terms of vendor changes. After you've done your process design, you want to do a separate software design. Software design should go into a few things. First, again, is user interface. Second is integration. Integration is probably the trickiest part, but it's also the most important part. You want to get into what are the categories of information you want to be transferring, what are the systems you're touching, what are the data elements, and then when are you going to transfer the data elements back and forth. During the process, the middleware vendor will say, great, we're going to do this off-site. And what you want to do is before they come on-site and disrupt your operation, you want to go and visit them. Because what will happen is if you say, all right, we're all ready for install. We'll come on-site. And sure enough, they won't have even started. So if you say you're going to go out there first and you want to see shipping or receiving or whatever the use cases you have, this is an opportunity for you to go out, get to know all the people who are working on the code, make sure that it's not just sort of a one-man band, and also ensure that all that functionality is at least reasonably there. And then fifth, and probably most importantly, is performance-based contracting, making sure that it performs to the level that was expected. So to wrap up, uh, there's, again, five more things, which are important numbers to remember in RFID software. <laughs> So the first is seven, and the seven elements of middleware selection. The second is four for the areas of functionality of middleware. These are the things that middleware actually covers. Third is the keys to success, things like performance-based contracting. The two different basic types of middleware, pre-canned apps and framework. And then finally, the four origins of where middleware comes from, network, integration, workflow, and devices. Any questions? I'd probably put them in the uh, in the integration area, actually, because BizTalk tends to be an EAI play. The unique thing about Microsoft, though, is they're trying to do a lot of pre-canned applications with partners, and that's pushing them, like the other integration players, towards that uh, that workflow. And thanks. Other questions? All right, well thank you.